I'm here at St John's Church in Drury and in South Auckland. This is the, the site of a, a, a cemetery uh, with a number of graves associated with the New Zealand Wars. And this one is of particular interest. This was um, erected in 2012 to a number of soldiers, uh, all but one from the 18th Royal Irish Regiment, which arrived in New Zealand in July 1863, literally days before the invasion of Waikato. Uh, and it was actually the last British regiment to leave New Zealand in February 1870. And the the Irish played a huge role in the New Zealand Wars. Um, we know from the work of Professor Charlotte MacDonald that two thirds of the rank and file soldiers in the British Army were actually Irish. As I've said before, at that level it's almost an Irish Army rather than a British Army we're talking about. So one of the things that fascinates me is, given that Ireland was the original guinea pig for British imperialism, what did these Irishmen who, who died and are buried here think of fighting a war of conquest and imperialism for the British? for the very same people who, who had conquered and stolen their country. Um, and so that's something I spent a lot of time trying to find answers to. And one of the things is a lot of these soldiers were illiterate, so they didn't necessarily leave behind letters and journals and diaries recounting their thoughts and experiences. But there is enough anecdotal evidence to suggest that they became increasingly disillusioned with um, the wars. and. They, they could see the parallels with the history of their own country. Um, and it's an interesting fact also that huge numbers of Māori today are descended from Irishmen, many of whom fought in the New Zealand wars against their ancestors. So, you know, the, 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 the story of the Irish is a complex one, both victims of colonisation and, and also agents of imperialism as well. And we need to acknowledge both sides of that story and all its complexity.